Hi, I'm Lydia Steves, and today we're going to talk about pan pastels and how and why I use them in conjunction with my colored pencils. Backgrounds have always been important to me. It doesn't matter what medium I've been using. Um, I always find that I would like to have an interesting background to just kind of set the scene and um, just make it pretty. I like soft, blotchy kind of backgrounds that really make the animal pop out. Now when I first started seriously designing with colored pencils, I used a variety of things. Uh, scrapbook papers were one of the first things I've tried. Um, in my first book I had this little wood grain paper that was kind of cool and then this paper here with the decorative edge all cut out. That was kind of interesting. In my second book I had another very interesting paper here. All those trees and everything were actually printed on the paper and the texture in here, the printed texture, was perfect for elephants. The eggs here were also something interesting that I used. The problem of course with scrapbook paper is um, you can get it today and you can't get it tomorrow. So I didn't like that part of it. Now something else that I was also experimenting with were these twinkling H2O's. So they're just basically a watercolor and then they've got this little slight shimmer and I really quite enjoyed that. So I, what I did here was I put some miskit on or a frisket and then I just put on the colors of the water. It was kind of fun to do. And here is a little bit more of a brighter just blotchy blotchy fun background with again all sorts of these little twinkling H2O's and the background of the Blue Jay was also done with that. And so I was in an art shop one day and I found pan pastels. And the only problem that I found with that is I couldn't decide what colors to buy. I thought that because I was working with backgrounds that I would want sort of some darker colors and they do come in sets. They come in sets for landscape, they come in sets for portraits if you like. Um, they come in just little um, sets of 10 for a variety of colors. I don't know how they choose the different 10. You could buy them individually. Um, I chose to purchase the uh, extra dark shades first and then the shades. Then I got the bright colors and then there are tints and of course there's um, always fun things that come out and there's some metallic ones out as well. So how you decide to purchase them of course is completely up to you but um, yeah I pretty much have them all because I can't decide. And of course you do um, you can buy these little uh, palettes, pan pastel palettes that um, you can put them in and they're actually quite fun. I took the little um, tag off the box and just taped that down so that I know what color I have but they, they are on the bottom as well so it's not too bad that way. So one thing that I think is very cool with these is that there's the, these are the bright colors or the true colors. These are come in, so now this one is called bright yellow green. Then there will be a corresponding bright yellow green tint. So tint is when you add white. Then we have bright yellow green shade. So your first dark value and finally you will have bright yellow green extra dark and that's the bright yellow green extra dark. So you really can get a variety of values within your your um, color. And then these metallics silver 
pewter, etc., gold, copper. Um, I really think they're just kind of fun to have. They're not a super metallic look. So um, that would be what you would want to purchase, you know, when you just wanted to have some fun with, uh, with some metallics. So the pan pastels can be really, really versatile. For instance, this little chipmunk one. I really only had two or three little colors and I just kind of buzzed them in and it set the, the uh, tone for a hot summer day. So get nice bright there and then as I got to the side I wanted to uh, get it a little bit darker. For this particular one I just wanted a really really soft gradation from one color to another and they went on just beautifully all the way down. So Rick a super controlled almost a wash I guess if you were doing watercolors. For this one all I did here was put in a little tiny bit just to break up the darkness of the background. And for the these two, I think these are probably my most complex ones where I have many, many colors within this background. I've got some bright green, I've got some blues, some grays, and really have tried to do quite a bit of different values and colors at the same time. Same with this one here. I got quite a few things happening some yellow, some pink, purple, gray, and then even sort of some raw sienna to, to bring in the ground. Here's another one where you can see quite a few things happening. I mean, I could have just stayed with the green and the yellow, but I've chose to also add in some purples and some um, warmer type colors to, to bring it to life just a little bit. So it, it's really whatever you whatever you like. What I usually do is I usually take a piece of paper and then decide on what kind of a look I'm going for, what I'm going to be doing, what I want in the background, and then I just start to randomly pick up colors and see what they do. Try to make a few notes on the side here, and then um, just keep on going. So this one was for Fuzzy Love, this one was for the Madoc one, and you just see how you did the bright yellow green shade or the bright yellow green, added the ultramarine blue, the phthalo green tint, and then the neutral gray. Once I get something that I think that I like, I might go again on the other side of the page and just see if I can't bring it down to maybe three or four colors. But um, really the fun part is to, especially if you have lots of colors, is to try to use as many as you possibly can. When you purchase the pan pastels, there's also, especially when you put them in, when you buy them in sets, you quite often get all these extra sponges. So these particular little applicators go on these little sticks. So these just kind of pull right off. And then you can put on the next one. And you can applicate. You can apply the um, pan pastels on with that. There's all sorts of little sponges, big round ones, little funny finger shaped ones. Um, you can see that I haven't actually used all that many. I prefer these big round ones for bigger areas, but um, the other thing is too, you can always buy these cosmetic sponges. They're a little bit softer than the ones you get with the, with the um, sets. Um, but you know, that doesn't matter. I just kind of wash them out in water. Just that's okay. And then you see, especially if you've got this, you can use one side for the dark, one side for the color. And you can wash, like I say, and then get most of it out. And then that's okay. You won't have too much um, color contamination. There's these little things that come with it too, and they just also look like little makeup sponges. You can put it on with hard brushes or some of the soft brushes too. Whatever, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's like you can pick whatever you want to apply these. These just happen to be my favorites. Now I usually tell people to test a few things out before they start because different papers grab 
these pastels differently. So you, if you end up getting some of that, you can maybe try to rub it and get rid of it, but you know, it is on there. So whatever stroke you've decided to use, that's pretty much what you're going to end up with at the end. So you do need to have a develop a bit of a light touch and practice a little bit so that you uh, you can control what you're going to get. Okay, so you can kind of go circles, you can go cross hatching. You can do swoops. Let's get another color in here. This is a burnt sienna. The first one was an orange extra dark. Now you do have all this um, dust or, oops, wrong one. Um, this you know, extra stuff that you're going to have to take care of, so that's okay. Don't blow on it and take it all over the place. Okay. I'm pretty much you always need three colors, I think. I don't think you can get away with too much less than that. Okay, so let's do Dairy... Dairylide Yellow and see what that's going to do. Try to do something a little bit different or come at it from a slightly different angle. Don't always do the same thing. Now if you decide you don't like it or you'd like to, re, um, to take some of it off, you would just use um, your kneaded eraser. Just press off. It won't come off. It won't like everything won't come off, but you will be able to at least take some of it off and then you could add something else. Put that one away. And you can kind of see I was sort of using uh, different sides of this same sponge. When I put them on, I tend to do that so that in case I want to go back, then I would just use that one and then I could um, add something else. So this is a bit of a, a light green. Now I don't really worry too much about contaminating the color, so I can put it on there and then I pick up and then put it on again. It doesn't seem to make that big a difference. This is a pretty hard surface of pastel and it's relatively easy to clean. Now on this little one that I it was just a little study that I was trying to do. I did put sort of just little random bits of pink all over the piece. Then I did the little kitty and then I went back in and darkened where I wanted so that I could really place exactly what I wanted and how I wanted it. For something such as this, I cut out, I had my drawing and I cut it out and pretty much taped it right there so that I could put the background in and I could bring it in slightly to where um, the owl was without creating a halo. And then I left the piece of paper more to the white or the original color of the paper so that I wouldn't have to struggle with the whole white snowy owl on this background. Now one thing you do have to remember is that you are going to have to spray, use a spray fixative on your backgrounds before you can do the colored pencil because you can see how it's lifting up and it's going to be really, really messy while you're doing your pencils. So again, I would have done a little bit here, kind of got my thoughts together, 
done my sprayed it, done my colored pencil, and then gone back and added things as when I was done this part. If you use OMS, which is what I do, um, it will it'll be fine as long as you've fixed your background. So I definitely fixed my background and that does not mean 14 layers. It means just maybe two layers making sure that you lift up and um, give this a little t rub, lift it up, see if you can see where it's coming. That's actually from the original demo. And then um, I would do this with my OMS. If I wanted to go back and add more, I would definitely have to wait till the end because if I would put OMS on an unfixed background, then you would get that little uh, halo mark of uh, liquid. And we don't want that. Not that you can't fix it because it was done in this little area here too. I think I had a little bit of a, an OMS a dirty watermark or whatever you want to call it. I'm not exactly even sure where it was uh, because then I went back with my background and I put in more things and added more things. So it goes along with what I always say, make a couple mistakes because if you make some mistakes, then you work really hard to fix them. And when you work that hard to fix them, you often end up with a much nicer piece or a more interesting piece anyways. This is another one of my uh, first ones that I did. So you can see the real direction. I've really placed in the different uh, colors. I think there's only three colors in this. And um, then I had this laser cut mat that I just kind of glued down on. And another nice, uh, kind of a fun thing to do is to use the pan pastels in conjunction with some stencils. So for this little margarita, I have just the three values of green and a little bit of a light dusting of the different colors or the values in here. And then I've taken my stencil and added even more interest by using the stencil. And then again, I have this laser cut um, mat that I, well this one is held in place with a frame but the other one I just kind of glued on. So here is my stencil and maybe I'm going to do the uh, flowers this time. So I can just pop in There we go, and then maybe pick up a little bit of a more intense color and just add a little bit extra interest there. And then we've got another <clears throat> another size. We can add another color in there like that. Get a little bit of overlapping. So you can see how pretty that's going to be. And um, so then I would definitely spray <clears throat> spray fix it of that. Just you can use your Krylon or whatever else that you would like to use. Uh, but it is just a fixative, fixative. It's not a varnish. And you can see why. So this little video was, you know, by no means extensive on what you can do with pan pastels. It just shows you what I do with them and why I like them and what works for me. So you can uh, look uh, on the internet and you can probably find many other videos with uh, different artists telling you why they like them or don't like them. Uh, hopefully I've given you a few things to try and I think the best part of them is that uh, they really do mix and match really nicely actually. And um, you just sort of pick up the colors as you want um, and what the ones that appeal most to you and what 
will be working really well for your particular artwork. Thanks very much for joining me. Take care.